Welcome to this video tutorial on administering blood and blood products. Blood transfusions are a life-saving treatment that the nurse must be able to administer safely, as well as recognize and manage adverse reactions with speed and confidence. As a nurse, it is important that you know the blood components that you will be administering. First, let's talk about whole blood. Whole blood contains all blood components red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets, plasma, the liquid component of blood, clotting factors, and immunoglobulins. It is used only when a patient loses a large amount of blood because it has a greater effect on body fluid volume. It must be transfused within 24 hours of collection since coagulation factors deteriorate after that. Patients rarely need all the components of whole blood, so it is more efficient and effective to give only the component needed to manage the specific condition. Second, we'll talk about packed red blood cells. Packed red blood cells contain hemoglobin, an iron-containing protein responsible for transporting oxygen in the blood. RBCs are separated from plasma and platelets and given for anemia and blood loss due to trauma or surgical blood loss. Thirdly, we'll take a look at platelets. Platelets are a cellular component that assist in the clotting process in blood vessel injuries. They are given for thrombocytopenia, or low platelets in the blood, and platelet function abnormalities. Fourth, let's look at granulocytes. Granulocytes are a type of white blood cell separated from whole blood given to patients with low granulocyte count or as supportive therapy for patients on chemotherapy. Fifth, we'll be looking at fresh frozen plasma, or FFP. Fresh frozen plasma, or FFP, is taken from whole blood and frozen within 24 hours of collection. Plasma is the liquid portion of blood containing 92% water and 8% plasma proteins, including albumin, fibrinogen, globulins, and other clotting proteins. FFP is given for clotting deficiencies, liver disease, and hemophilia. And lastly, let's look at cryoprecipitate. Cryoprecipitate, often referred to as cryo, is the precipitated material obtained from FFP when thawed. It contains coagulation factors 8 and 13, fibrinogen, von Willebrand factor, and fibronectin. It is given to prevent or control bleeding in patients with hemophilia, von Willebrand disease, to correct low fibrinogen levels, and for other clotting disorders. When giving a blood transfusion, it is important to know how blood is grouped. The ABO system is based on the presence or absence of the A and B antigens. Type A blood has the A antigen. Type B blood has the B antigen. Type AB has both. Type O has neither. The compatibility of blood types between donor and recipient is dependent on the presence or absence of A and B antigens and antibodies. The RH system is based on the presence or absence of the major D antigen on the surface of the RBCs. A person who has the D antigen is RH positive. A person who does not have the D antigen is RH negative. The following is a list of compatible blood types. If a patient has type O blood, they can receive only type O. If the patient has type A, they can receive types A or O. If they have type B, they can receive type B or O. And if the patient has type AB blood, they can receive any type, A, B, AB, or O, and they are known as the universal recipient. If a patient has type A blood, they can donate to types A and AB. If the patient has type B, they can donate to type B and AB. If the patient has type AB blood, they can only donate to type AB. And if the patient has type O, they can donate to all types, A, B, AB, or O, and they are known as the universal donor. Safe practice starts with several key actions that must be taken before beginning a transfusion. Accurately collect blood samples for a type and cross match. This will determine the patient's ABO group and RH type. Verify the physician's order for the transfusion. The physician should have discussed with the patient the benefits as well as the potential adverse effects of the transfusion. Verify that the patient's religious or cultural beliefs do not prohibit transfusions of blood or blood components. 
confirm that the patient has signed an informed consent, which is required for transfusing all blood and blood products. Obtain baseline vital signs and do a physical assessment of the patient to help identify later changes. Assessment should include IV assessment, check for patency and preferred catheter size, 20 gauge or larger, to prevent blood hemolysis. Assess for breath sounds, the presence of rash or not, and sufficient voiding of at least 30 milliliters per hour. Don't forget to document all findings. Educate the patient regarding the basics of the procedure, including the need for IV access, monitoring vital signs, and signs and symptoms to watch for that could indicate a transfusion reaction, such as nausea, difficulty breathing, back or chest pain, or chills. Reassure the patient that donor blood has been thoroughly screened and tested to identify the presence of viruses. Once the blood bank has issued the blood component to the nurse, the transfusion needs to be started within 30 minutes or returned to the blood bank. Let's walk through the next steps involved in administering a blood transfusion. When arriving at the patient bedside, two licensed RNs, or according to hospital policy, will check the blood or blood product and document all of the following. Patient's name, patient's medical record number, the patient's unique blood bank identification blood band number, the patient's blood type, the type of blood or blood product ordered for the patient, the expiration date of the blood product, and the blood unit identification number. If any information does not match or there is an abnormal appearance of the product, the blood product will be returned to the blood bank and the physician will be notified. Normal saline, 0.9% sodium chloride, IV solution, should be primed through the sterile Y-connector blood administration set, which has a filter to retain particles potentially harmful to the patient. It is wise to start the normal saline at 30 milliliters per hour while picking up the blood from the blood bank to ensure that the IV site is patent and IV lines are ready for the blood to be started. Here are some important notes to remember when giving a blood transfusion. Blood administration tubing can be used for up to two units of blood. However, under usual circumstances, the blood transfusion will take around three to four hours, so tubing will need to be changed with each unit of blood. Each unit of blood or blood product must be transfused within four hours of issue from the blood bank. Do not give any drugs through the IV line in which the blood is transfusing. Normal saline is the only solution that can be added to blood or blood products. All vital signs, temperature, blood pressure, pulse, and respiration must be assessed and documented according to hospital policy. An example is as follows. Vital signs must be taken before initiating the transfusion, 15 minutes after the transfusion is initiated, every 30 minutes times two, and then hourly, and at the completion of the blood transfusion. The physician may order for the patient to be pre-medicated prior to the transfusion with Tylenol or Benadryl to help immunologic transfusion reactions, such as fever or histamine release. The RN stays with the patient during the first 15 minutes, assessing for signs and symptoms of transfusion reactions, which could include anything from a mild rash or itching to a life-threatening acute hemolytic reaction. Assess for the following, skin rash or hives, itching, flushing, increased body temperature, more than 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit, body chills or shivering, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, significant changes in vital signs, changes in mental status, pain, anxiety, or nausea, chest pain, or a tightening sensation. Continue to monitor the patient for any of these symptoms throughout the transfusion. If any transfusion reaction symptoms are observed, act immediately by stopping the blood transfusion, maintain the IV line with normal saline at 30 milliliters per hour, provide emergency care if needed, notify the physician and obtain orders, notify the blood bank of a transfusion reaction, and return the remaining blood and tubing to the blood bank in a sealed container. An incident report needs to be completed for the blood transfusion reaction. Remember, blood transfusions are life-saving for the patient, and you as the nurse want to be confident of the steps to take before and during the transfusion of blood and blood products. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on blood administration, and be sure to check out our other videos in the description below.